I'm Barbara Cockham with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, 1220 AM, KHTS. Ha <laughs> ha, I did it. This is a show for, about, and by seniors, giving information to enhance one's quality of life. And our guest this morning is the one and only Alex Urbina, who is a life coach by profession. I am. Good morning. How are you? I'm blessed. How are you? I am too. I'm so glad to see you. I'm so glad to see you. And it's good to be alive, isn't it? Yes, it is. <laughs> every day every day that we open our eyes, uh, it's a blessing. It is. And every day I open my eyes, my kitty cat is right around my head oh. going, meow, 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 like, it's time to get up, Mom. I'm hungry. <laughs> You're loved. Oh, am I? Yeah. I go to bed like that. She's all around me. She sleeps over my head. And I wake up, and there she is, those little eyes looking at me. <laughs> and sometimes I don't want to open my eyes because she'll see that, and she'll start smashing around. Right, you know? right, right. <laughs> no, let me sleep a few more minutes. <laughs> well, good morning, Dr. Jean. It's good to good see you. Good morning, Barbara. <laughs> How are you? Fine. And you know Alex Urbina. Yes. Fist bump. Fist bumps for Oops, everybody. Fist bumps for everybody, yes. <laughs> now, and why are we doing fist bumps and elbow bumps? Oh, I don't know. We were talking about you and your Gatorade, too. Uh, and Carl's Gatorade. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah, Carl is always flashing the Gatorade. I know. I and, of course, we wish him stuff. well. Oh, yes, we Absolutely. do. Absolutely. Yeah. But he, and we understand, has tested, po tested positive again. Uh, and yeah. that's... This, that's the third time, isn't it? Well, you know, it's this virus is very interesting. Um, there really aren't any experts on this. This is evolving. Um, and I think we're going to, a year from now, we'll have a better handle on it. But right now, we certainly don't. And so we're living in a world right now of the unknown. So we have to be cautious. That's true. And we have to take the statistics that are coming out. And, you know, we, the, the hard part is we, we've looked at where it initially started, uh, this virus, uh, and we worry that sometimes the statistics were skewed. I think we're getting a more legitimate, uh, more legitimate data now uh, from China uh, that is going to help us in our country uh, and aid us figure out how how to deal with it. Uh, but the numbers have increased. We have over a thousand cases in California now. Uh, we have 30 deaths, uh, and it is hitting uh, the older adult population. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you something. What about these statistics or whatever you said in China? Mm -hmm. What about them? They've well, you know, there was worry that they were not releasing all the statistics, but I think oh, okay. um, I, th I think we're getting a, a better understanding, and I, I think they were, you know, they're fearful. I mean, they're the epicenter of uh, all of this, and, you know, they want to figure this out because uh, they have reported that uh, the numbers have started to, they plateaued and started to decrease, and that comes from containment. We're just, we're increasing right now. So how do we, you know, Alex, how do we handle that? How do we handle, uh, when I was at city council last night, um, you know, it was brought up by our mayor uh, and city council members, and one of the city council members mentioned that um, there was a seven-year-old at a school that was worried about dying from the coronavirus. And uh, how, how do we deal with that? How do we tell our grandkids, our kids, uh, that, you know, we're, we're working on this? How do we keep them calm and vigilant uh, in this process? I think we have to, one, create a safe space for our kids mm -hmm. to share their concern and let it be okay mm -hmm. that they have a fear because as human beings, it's okay to be fearful because it's part of our own feelings that remind us that we're that we're afraid of something. We're vulnerable. Yeah, we're vulnerable, and and I think the last thing you want to do is not validate a child's feelings. Mm -hmm. So allow allow it to be okay for your son or daughter to express that. That's number one, mm -hmm. and then after they're completed their sharing of the fear, 
then you can open up a dialogue a little bit more about how to better protect yourself and then teach them how to be mindful and aware of the things that they're doing that they can control yes. rather than the things that they can't control, which is world events. All right. And I call it barriers, you know, self-protection, um, uh, staying away from social gatherings if you can, limiting the number, uh, washing your hands. Uh, and I do believe in masks. I think those are important. And right now we're, I think, evolving on that thought process. Uh, cleaning areas around us, sterilizing them. Um, but I think that the setting up uh, ground rules uh, so that we have barriers and teaching our children uh, and everybody else, but uh, by knowing that you can do something to help prevent it, allay some of those fears. It's funny because when I coach either my clients or have conversations to help people uh, master their life, a lot of times I tell them not to play the what if game mm -hmm. because the what if game you can't win. It's That's a right. it's a it's a game your ego plays in your mind that'll just keep you worrying until the point where you now have anxieties and you're really stressed out. Mm -hmm. However, in something like this, it's okay to play the what if game in a way of opening up a discussion so that you guys can talk about to plan to plan just in case mm -hmm. so it's okay to have conversations in your family living rooms to say all right guys as we're eating our dinner you know what if this scenario comes up what should we do so the what if game is good in a proactive intentional mm -hmm. way to try to come up with game plans to set yourself up to win in the event that something pops up it's 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 a part of educating yourself and and creating some kind of game plan there's no different than when we were in school they did the what if game if a fire happened, right? We did these mm -hmm. drills. Do you yeah. remember yeah. those? Yes. Oh, absolutely. Earthquake drills. What What did you do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were taught to get underneath your underneath desk, your right? Desk. Absolutely. And in a fire, in the case of fire, the alarms went off and we lined up, you know, where we didn't panic and we all walked out together mm -hmm. from classroom to classroom. So that was a what if scenarios, mm -hmm. but they didn't go past the point of where it became where you where you kept going what if after that because then you would drive yourself nuts and then you would be so fearful that you would go out and start buying up all the toilet water paper. and all the toilet paper <laughs> from er from every store. Well, it was interesting. I went to Stater Brothers yesterday to do some shopping, just regular shopping. Mm -hmm. And I walked along I walked along the toilet area. <laughs> Every shelf was empty. Empty. I was there too. Absolutely <laughs> empty. And I thought, what? Isn't it a weird sight though? We're not used to that. No, <laughs> no, not at all. We're you we're empty so shelves. Like we're so used to be seeing things in abundance. Mm -hmm. We're not used to see people panicking and, but and panicking over toilet paper? That doesn't make any sense to me. No, I think they're worried if that they're going to be paper laid up. Towels. They're and paper towels, are, some of them are gone, too. Yeah, that's you know, true. And that's the, true. the wipes, But I needed paper them. towels because I was out of them. <laughs> Did you find them there? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, had, good, Yeah, good, they good. had them at uh, Stater Brothers. But, you know, but you talk about fire drills and going through procedures that um, drop drills, we used to call them. We used to have air raid sirens on Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning. Oh, Most yes. people have forgotten that. I've lived that. through those, believe me. <laughs> and so, you know, we, we, there, there are things that we do on a routine basis to, to understand that we, we have something to do when it happens. When you're in the military, uh, you go through training. You keep doing things and doing things with the thought that, yeah, maybe at some point you're going to be bombed or shot at or something's going to happen, and you have to fight back. But when you go through it, then you get used to that routine. So <coughs> your brain is already thinking ahead as you're going through your routine to be prepared for something else when it really does happen. So, uh, you know, it's important that these kids are, are – being told and having a discussion, uh, what if, yes, but also being proactive and understanding what they need to do and how to be pretty aggressive in, in setting up those barriers. That's why that word you use, pr preparation, to be prepared um, is key. But you just want to make sure that you don't go past being prepared because mm -hmm. past being prepared is where the fear really kicks in. Yes. That's right. And then that's where the panic happens. Mm -hmm. So there's a that's distinction right. between prepared and awareness versus panic, fear and panic. Mm -hmm. And we have to know where that line is and not cross it. Mm -hmm. For example, when you talk about going to the market, uh, probably about f 
maybe last Friday before I was uh, went out of town for to, to do a, a training. Uh, I went to the market the same way you did to buy just the common goods that we get that we stock up every day, right, for for mm -hmm. daily life. And I went, and they actually had a whole roll, a whole roll still with toilet paper at that time. And so I gra we probably needed maybe two or three rolls to restock, but I grabbed one as a statement to the universe, to my community, that I'm only going to take what I need right mm -hmm. now. So it's it's more like it was it was my great greatest effort to counterbalance the fear that was happening. But if we all did that, if we all came from, I'm going to counterbalance all this fear-based stuff, and if enough of us did that, we would – I think we would dial back the fear that's happening in our communities. Mm -hmm. um, it just takes each one of us to be doing the right thing rather than mm -hmm. doing the thing that's causing panic. And information is so important. Communication is so important. Uh, when we have discussion, uh, it helps allay those fears, as I mentioned. I think it's, you know, to bring it forward as opposed to hide on it, neglect it, or um, uh, not be transparent about it. And I think going back to uh, governments, uh, and I think you know, the Chinese government uh, may have held back a little bit of the uh, uh, statistics, uh, but hopefully now they're revealing what they need to reveal to help the rest of the world. Are they team players in terms of the world? Well, you know, that's hard to say, but, you know, hopefully in terms of the world's health, uh, they are. And certainly in this country, we have to uh, try to work on this together at every level. <coughs> at every level, we have to be able to uh, discuss these issues. And since we know statistically the uh, older adults are being affected, in uh, Korea, um, not one person under 30 has died from the coronavirus. In uh, Japan, not one person under 50 has died. So that means everybody who has died are older and that's who's being affected right now and that's who we have to concentrate on so you know for those who have grandparents for those who uh, have older adults uh, seniors who are living in this community and maybe not so much in this community awareness is so important getting the facts and information is so important uh, but also when you have misinformation that can lead to panic. Misinformation can lead to a prejudice that uh, some people he even here in the studio uh, have faced. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is a, a part of the uh, uh, life that, that we live uh, and the emotions that as we as human beings have. But you know, we, we need to face this head on uh, and we need to do it uh, in a calculated way that I think is important. So how do our how do our older adults, Alex, how do they uh, handle this information? I, I, I've been over at the senior center and I think they're handling it very well. Uh, you know, they have a wherewithal that, you know, they've, one, lived a good life and they're happy and they're going to continue what they're doing, but now they have to enhance their, their life and even sometimes their lifestyle. Yeah, I think that we, we as individuals just have to, whether you're young or old, but more importantly, if you're elder, because um, you can't fight this uh, as aggressive as the disease itself is, is aggressive. So mm -hmm. you really got to just look out for yourself. You got to make yourself important mm -hmm. and you got to you don't have to operate from fear, but you should operate from concern. Mm -hmm. So fear and concern are two distinctive, different Absolutely. feelings. Absolutely. And so, so it's a diligent concern for myself, but I'm not going to cross that line into fear and panic. Um, one example is my, my mother-in-law is 88, and she lives with us. And my, sis my sister-in-law had pre-planned an event to take her out to, um, into Henderson, Nevada, to go visit her sister. And they mm -hmm. haven't seen each other for a while. And it was supposed to be this last weekend. And uh, I think everyone was kind of just not really concerned about her, but I had a concern. And I wanted to make sure I mentioned my concern before I left for the weekend because mm -hmm. I didn't want later on, if something did happen, to ha have my own guilt that mm -hmm. I didn't at least express it. So I shared my concern saying maybe, and it was just like planting a seed. Hey, maybe this one you parlay 
and get your get your money back for your flight and do it at a different time. You don't have this isn't a have to. This was more like of a, a get to visit. Mm -hmm. And I just shared my concern. And when I got back, my wife told me that my mother in law thought about it and said, hey, I, I agree. I think maybe I should take it easy on this one. And she didn't end up going. Mm -hmm. um, but it was but it was a healthy decision that she made for herself. I didn't force her. But I just felt like I needed to share that insight because, you know, maybe she wasn't maybe she was feeling invincible. Maybe she thought, you know, it's never going to happen to me. And I just think that we got to just be looking out for ourselves and calculate some mm -hmm. of the choices we make so that we don't regret it later. Well, I think it's interesting. I think it's a good thing that you canceled because being on an airplane is a very, very I know. tight place. And you're on there for several hours. Mm -hmm. and, and you don't know who's getting on no. and That's where they've been exactly or, or what right. barriers they have That's set right. up. Now, How if, what interventions they have If you had, had said, well, they're driving there. Maybe a different scenario, That's right? That's a different mm -hmm. scenario. Yeah, yeah Because yeah. I just got back from out, from out of town. I spent three days in Laughlin yeah. mm -hmm. and drove. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting because there weren't that many people in the different casinos we right. visited mm -hmm. and walking along the, the river. There weren't that many people there. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, it didn't dawn on me until I thought, where's everybody? And then it finally think, oh, it must be this panic over the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, now, well, we also so got to be careful not to mistake when people are deciding to take it easy all at the same time. And all of a sudden now everything looks like um, every, like people aren't showing up in masses in certain areas, mm -hmm. right? Let's say everybody at one time, like today, decides, you know what, I don't necessarily need to go to that today. I'm just going to stay home. Mm -hmm. Well, if enough people in a certain area decide to do that, everything is going to be slow. Your, your freeways are going to be light. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy to interpret that it's caused a panic. So we got to be right. careful. It, just because everyone at the one given time decides <laughs> to just look out for themselves might not necessarily be a panic. I think mm -hmm. the panic is showing up in the hoarding, <laughs> the right? toilet paper. In, yeah, <laughs> in the hoarding, and the, yeah, those kinds of things. But but it's okay for all of us if we all decide, you know what? Maybe I shouldn't go on that cruise. Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't go to that, you know, uh, basketball game tonight. Mm -hmm. Maybe I just take it easy the next couple of weeks. We got to be careful not to cause to call that a panic when it might not necessarily be one as well and I, th well, I think I those are barriers that we set up and I think it's important that uh, we start to align ourselves with the idea that we have to protect ourselves and our families and we have to protect each other the bad part is we don't always know when that other person is is indeed trying to do that sometimes there there are people lots of people out there that have never heard of the coronavirus and even some of our listeners right now be, might be going what are they talking about but it is it is now here and it is a threat to our older population and we have to uh, remember in setting up criteria on how we are going to protect ourselves how we are going to set up those barriers that's important that uh, we we get an educated idea on how to do that uh, from uh, and like I said there are no experts at all on this so I I'm a geriatric doctor I'm not an infectious disease doctor you know but I do feel I have now enough expertise uh, in terms of talking about this right now I'll, a year from now I definitely will not uh, because people will be way ahead of me but for the moment, in terms of discussing that with this community, I think it's important that doctors, the hospital, uh, and other people in this community come out and uh, make everyone aware of what they need to do uh, to continue living their lives the way they want to live it. Santa Cruz is a great place, but you know we all have to work together in this effort. That's true, we do. And let's discuss this further after the break, okay? I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220, KHTS. Come see the beautiful new homes you've been waiting for. Luna, Hardy Homes' newest neighborhood at Skyline in Santa Clarita, will have its grand opening on Saturday, March 21st from noon to 3 p.m. 
Come out for tours of our gorgeous model homes and see the wide open spaces of Skyline, plus the rich amenities that are all part of life at Luna, with homes starting in the low 600s. Bring the kids for astronaut training camp and enjoy food, fun, and music. It's all happening on March 21st from noon to 3. RSVP now at partyhomes.com slash LunaGO to save your spot. Experience luxury senior living at Oakmont of Valencia, Oakmont's brand new community in Santa Clarita. At Oakmont of Valencia, residents will enjoy five-star amenities, including state-of-the-art movie theaters, spacious custom-built apartment homes, and sweeping views of the valley, all in close proximity to shopping, restaurants, and medical centers. Enjoy resort-style living, professional concierge services, a luxurious salon and day spa, and world-class dining. At Oakmont of Valencia, you'll embrace retirement in style. Enjoy impeccable service and unending possibilities with Oakmont. For details, visit oakmontofvalencia.com. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one Advanced Audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. There's a very good reason Embrace Your Smile has been voted Santa Clarita's number one orthodontist for 10 years in a row. Honestly, it's our team. Dr. Megan LaCornu. I think for me, what makes it stand out is when I have patients that come up to me and say, we have never been in a doctor's office that feels like this. Our team is a family and we really get along and we are really passionate about what we do, helping our patients get the smiles they want and deserve. Dr. Megan LaCornu of Embrace Your Smile Orthodontics. Embrace your smile. EmbraceYourSmile.com. Your, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me? When I'm 64. Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co host, Dr. Jean Dorio. On your hometown station, 98.1 FM AM, 1220 KHTS. And we're speaking with Alex Urbina, who is a life coach. But we haven't talked about life, have we, other than <laughs> well, we are sickness? We are talking about yeah. Other than yeah, sickness. Yeah. And there's much more to life than illness. But talking about um, seniors being the, the pinpointed um, section of people who are more susceptible why is that if if seniors are taking care of themselves eating healthy getting getting good exercise they're as healthy as young young people are in many many cases i i think i can run rings about around a lot of kids i'm in good health i've had my sieges battles with illness cancer and what have you but I've always tried to take good care of myself and exercise and, and eat properly, and I feel like I'm in good health. Mm -hmm. I, I would have a hard time catching that virus, I think. <laughs> oh, you added, I, I think, no, that you're well, right. No, I, mean, I'm, I really. It, it's, and, it's and that's a great attitude to have, mm -hmm. being confident and, and sure of you know, your own health because you're in charge of your own health, so yep. if you know you've been taking care of yourself, you know, you've been taking, you know, all the precautions to be strong and got your immune system boosted. But there's still the the stuff that we don't know. And right. the reason, like you said, the you, when you said I think at the end, we can be as confident as ever and you still don't know. Yeah. It's it, it's like it's like, oh, I can go through that. And, you know, you could be confident believing you can. Mm -hmm. But until you actually get exposed to it, you don't actually know if you can or not. So it's a risk. You'd have to risk that. And I think it's the, like you said earlier and during the break, it's the fear of the unknown that has mm -hmm. people panic and really go from the concern and they go past the concern into the worry mm -hmm. and then the worry into the fear and then the fear mm -hmm. into the panic. Mm -hmm. So there's different stages in the state of mind that people have to learn how to, you have to learn how to stay within your little area mm -hmm. that's not going to take you down past mm -hmm. into the other stages <laughs> which actually makes it worse. Mm -hmm. If you think oh, about yeah. it, somebody who's really worried and really stressed out, by being worried and stressed out, you drop your immune system. That's mm -hmm. right. <laughs> so you, you, don't, rea you do. don't realize that the worry and the fear and, uh, and the panic causes, the it causes stress on the immune system and it drops it. So it's important to stay in the concern. And so we'll call it concern slash confident. 
that mm-hmm. that you'll be mm-hmm. you'll be good, right? Yeah. We yeah. don't we don't know why older adults are more susceptible. We we don't know the answer. I was lucky when I went to medical school. I did not memorize anything other than drug names, uh, but because of that, I learned mechanisms, mm. and we know that um, the mechanism that uh, seniors are being affected is uh, mostly through their lungs. Uh, so the cough, the uh, shortness of breath, um, these are the lungs being hit by the virus. And uh, when you get ill, with the f- whether you have the flu or pneumonia, your immune system acts up and f- tries to fight. It brings fluid in and the fluid uh, causes congestion. The fluid makes you cough and sneeze and uh, the body is trying to protect itself. Uh, and the, the thought is, right now, the, the potential thought is that the human body, the older adults, have an enhanced ability to fight uh, through these mechanisms with the immunity, uh, more so than kids. And because it fights real hard and produces a higher level of pneumonia uh, and response, uh, that's so these secretions and everything cause the shortness of breath, cause the increased coughing, but causes enhanced and worsening of the lung tissue. And people succumb because of that. So there's a mechanism. We'll figure that out a year from now also. But right now, uh, we don't know. And we're just going by statistics that are saying that older adults uh, are going to be the ones uh, who are affected. But you have to, you know, have to, if if you are listening to this show or you have loved ones who are older adults uh, and you know that they might not understand all the potential barriers uh, like hand washing, uh, sometimes a mask, uh, isolation, uh, things like that. Uh, if you, they don't know it, you should help them with that. You should be talking to your loved ones about <coughs> helping to prevent uh, these problems and putting those barriers up. Now, when it comes to the physical wellness, I'm not an expert at that, and you would be more qualified to talk about that and understand that and learn about that. What I am an expert at is more the mental Mm -hmm. part of it. And what I believe, this is my hypothesis, is that when it comes to some of the elder people that might potentially be more at risk is is the mindset. Mm -hmm. If you have lost the will or giving up the reins on the will to live, I can see a, I can see something like this come in and be so aggressive that your will is not matching the, ag- the aggressiveness of this virus, and your will is important. It's part of the drive that has your immune system try to fight back. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I say that is because I have my own mother-in-law who lives with us, 88 years old, like I just shared in the story earlier about um, con- not convincing, but persuading her to really consider not going. She's made comments like, you know what, I've lived my life, I'm ready to go. And, and when you start talking like that, it gives an example of the will that somebody has mm-hmm. to live or not. Mm-hmm. And if you have already been living in that state for a year, three years, five years, and it's almost like you've surrendered your life to some degree, then what's to say that if you get whether it's the coronavirus or a flu, that your your intention within yourself is going to fight that. Mm-hmm. So I believe that the will to live also plays a part in how how aggressive you fight back because you want to live one more day to spend with your son or your daughter or your grandkids or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. I think it's important. Yeah, and when you have purpose, when you have right. when you have something in the future, uh, graduation of your granddaughter, um, the bat mitzvah of your 13-year-old, the, um, uh, the um, marriage uh, of your grandson. Uh, these are all things that uh, are my patients hold on to, and they find a reason to live. But that, pe- but that reason is the value that somebody it's, gives it. It's invaluable. Because, because as you describe those three scenarios, let's say my mother-in-law has those scenarios coming up in the future. Mm-hmm. Just because they come up doesn't mean that they're important to her. 
she would have to decide for herself that right. me oh, being yeah. there is important. Exactly. So we're the meaning maker to our own value. Mm -hmm. And if we're the meaning maker to our own value, then we're, our, we're the meaning maker to our own purpose and deciding what's purposeful for us, too. Mm -hmm. you know, I had uh, one patient who uh, many years ago now was a uh, you know, strict party person, but he wanted a particular person to win. And so, and he was uh, not in good health, but he had put his vote in, absentee ballot, and waited for the election. The election came, and the next day, we, th that night, his candidate won. The next day, he passed away. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. And this, it was his life to put that his vote in. It was his life to see his candidate win with the hope that it would change the direction of our country, which it really didn't. But the fact was, that's what he wanted. Right, right. And that's what he believed. That's, that's what right. he believed. Well, it all goes back to your belief. <coughs> your belief yes, is does. is what creates <coughs> the value. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, as you were telling that story, I thought to m I thought you were going to say that he got sick uh -huh. the next day. And so when he said he died, it was like, <laughs> okay, I can see that. I can see that being the next level, right? Yeah. And it, w it, yeah. And it was. Yeah. So, you know, the, the s psychologically, t so often, you know, uh, how we think of the world around us, how we interact uh, with our family, our loved ones, and the community make a huge difference on how mm -hmm. one uh, pursues life. And yeah, the positive uh, look and aspect uh, makes huge differences in terms of one getting ill or not getting ill, right. you know, losing the will or moving forward. So, and it's, it's hard. So I always try to delve into my patients where they're coming from. And I would say nine out of 10, I can find something for them to hold on to. And I, too often, Alex, too often that situation with that gentleman and voting, too often I have seen that with uh, their family members graduating or having a child or all these little things that people held on to. And then, and then they went. Yeah, that was it. They yeah. held on to that, and it it kept them going. How does that happen when you have kidney disease or heart disease or you know uh, significant problems, but you can still hold out until this event? Why does that happen? So for me, I've been a strong believer that psychologically, oh you know, yes, you, you it's it having it a positive attitude that's right. positive that's right. makes purpose. all the difference in the world. That's right. I strongly believe that. What's re what's really inspiring to me is like I've seen you know I've heard of people that have they bought they battled through cancer twice, mm -hmm. and and they're so confident they're like. Man, I battled cancer twice. Bring on that coronavirus. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and it's and it's real refreshing to see people mm -hmm. like really have that kind of belief mm -hmm. and in in themselves mm -hmm. because I believe that that makes their immune system stronger. It, it makes their will stronger. I strongly and, and, believe and to, that. And to believe that it's like, you know, it's like, man, that's it's so <coughs> it's so inspiring to see that level of intensity to go, you know, I'm I'm gonna live my life. It's just like terrorism. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to live my life not being afraid to go out there and live my life mm -hmm. because that's what terrorists want. Yeah. Right. They want to cause fear. They want to cause panic. And, and we, if you take that same mentality, it's the same thing with the, a virus that get that comes up. It's a virus. Mm -hmm. If we all believe that we're stronger than a virus, I believe we can eradicate viruses and illnesses. Mm -hmm. But it takes the consciousness of, of all of us to get ourselves to that level as well. And if we have people that aren't that strong in, in, in their will and their mindset, you know, because of whatever kind of life they lived or evidence they've created, you know, those, those are the ones that are the easiest to attack. Mm -hmm. yep. You look at it in the wilderness when you have some of these kings of the jungle, like the, the panthers and the cougars, mm -hmm. when they're out there uh, looking for prey, who are they looking for? Are they looking for the strong ones? They're looking for the not. one who is the weakest of the bunch, and mm -hmm. they're going to try to attack that. Mm -hmm. That's very true, yeah. and it, it's interesting. You know, um, my positive attitude comes from when I was a little girl, going through the war. That's right. And and beating all of that, surviving, mm -hmm. 
having to walk to, to school with a gas mask on my back mm. and occasionally having to put it on and use it and then coming to the United States and going through school here being viciously derided because of my accent. I didn't talk like the rest of them and I was made fun of constantly. I battled through that. You're not going to get me down. That's right. You're not going to do it. That's right. And then mm -hmm. I, I went through a horrible divorce. I lost a son. I lost a husband. I beat cancer. And I'm thinking, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to be here. And I'm going to continue to be here. You're so resilient. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're not going to get me down. I don't care what you try. <laughs> Nobody's going to do that. Good for I've, you. I've, mm -hmm. I've got that positive attitude and I've mm -hmm. always had that and I think I get that from my dad mm -hmm. because because my dad was always telling me look forward mm -hmm. yeah you go. open your eyes and look forward and bless his heart that's what he did mm -hmm. he really did and he he did wonders with his life you know worked for the for royalty as a valet as a butler and went into the service and he was an incredible man and um my mom always used to tell me you're just like your father <laughs> i think thank goodness i'm just like That's my father right. you know right. because it's helped me battle so many things because i got that positive attitude from him and I bless him for that every single day. That's amazing. And nobody's going to take that positive attitude away from me. I don't care what happens Good to me. Because I'm going to beat it. I have a, a an uncle. He's served two tours in Vietnam, battled uh, two heart surgeries, and the guy's fearless. <laughs> <laughs> and my cousins, they're amazed. And all of the nephews were amazed because he just – he walks around like he's invincible. And, and I think because he walks around like that and believes that, based on results, he's pretty invincible. I mean, <laughs> until, I mean, look, we all have our expiration date. Yes, and we don't know when it is. That's like right. Like with Kobe Bryant, right, in this yeah, tragic yeah. accident. You, I mean, he, he had turned a corner. He's yeah. retired, ready to start, like, just savoring the moments, and those precious moments with living, you know, spending his life with his kids. And then this, like that. We can go at any given moment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think it really depends on your outlook on life. Are you going to live it in fear? Or are you going to just be cautious enough to be able to, you know, live f live like a free man would, right? Mm -hmm. Be free. Mm -hmm. And I think if we can figure the balance between being free and cautious but not letting the fear run us, I think we'll live a beautiful life. Well, I, I think and having a positive attitude helps. I mean, even though I've, I've had cancer at 75, and I, I thought at the time, do 75-year-old people with cancer survive? I remember that thought going through my mind mm -hmm. and talking it over with Dr. Black. And he, he always told me, he said, you've got a positive attitude. You're going to beat this. And I did. And I think a lot of it has had to do with my positive attitude and taking care of myself throughout my life. I really do. And nobody's going to take that attitude away from me. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Try as they may, they won't do it. They Good won't for do you. It. And you know, yeah. uh, Gene, I don't know if, if it's so much that people are afraid of dying from it than they are actually just catching it or getting it. Yeah. I think suffering. Oh, people is it? People is it don't. So it's know, a fear if of they die if they could just boom. So, go, so but it's a fear of suffering. Of, of the constant oh. pain of not breathing yeah. and all the. Oh, okay, got it. Yeah, it's all suffering. Right, yeah. And no, I th you're probably that's right. That's the word suffering. Yeah. Nobody wants to suffer. Yeah. It's very painful to suffer. You know, and we need to take a break, don't we? <laughs> so we won't suffer. So you <laughs> won't suffer. <laughs> 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 I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host Dr. Jean Dorio on your hometown station 98.1 FM AM 1220 KHTS. I'm Dr. Travis Stork, host of The Doctors, here to talk to you about the coronavirus COVID-19. There's currently no vaccine to prevent coronavirus. The best way to prevent illness is to avoid being exposed to this virus. The CDC recommends the following everyday preventive actions to help prevent the spread of respiratory diseases. Avoid close contact with people who are sick. 
Avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth. Stay home when you are sick. Cover your cough or sneeze with the tissue. Clean and disinfect frequently touched objects and surfaces using a cleaning spray or wipe. And if you think you may have been exposed to COVID-19, please contact your health care provider immediately. For more information about the coronavirus, log on to cdc.gov. Olive Terrace Bar and Grill is the hottest new Mediterranean fusion restaurant in Santa Clarita with unique delicacies like seafood right off the boat. Mouth-watering prime steaks, artesian sandwiches, delicious pastas, and tasty kebabs. Unwind on their cozy outdoor patio at their weekend champagne brunch, full menu, and weekly specials at oliveterracebarandgrill.com. Check out their full bar and happy hour daily specials in Valencia on Copper Hill and Newhall Ranch Road by LA Fitness. Olive Terrace Bar and Grill, delicious food seasoned with love. This is Bradley Gross from Santa Clarita Grocery. Santa Clarita Grocery serves fresh groceries to families, individuals, and those experiencing homelessness. At Santa Clarita Grocery, out of every dollar donated, a full 99 cents goes directly to the needs being addressed. As an all-volunteer-led organization, we operate on a 1% overhead, receiving no government funding for our operations in the community, resulting in us being one of the most efficient charities in the Santa Clarita Valley. If you're looking to support the good for our community, please consider partnering with us by donating to Santa Clarita Grocery. What is donated is specifically kept in the Santa Clarita Valley, helping over 3,000 families, including five other community charities. Please visit our website, santaclaritagrocery.org, or visit us on social media or call us at 425-7575. That's 425-7575. At Advanced Audiology, we know how important hearing is to you, your loved ones, your work success, your safety, and your ability to stay in the game. Most people won't admit hearing loss to themselves or others. We make it easy for you. Today's digital hearing aids come in a variety of styles, including invisible. All feature-rich, providing unparalleled hearing quality, wearing comfort, and automation that simplifies your life. Don't be fooled by our imitators. There's only one Advanced Audiology with the purple sign next to AAA on Valencia Boulevard. It's like no other station I've ever listened to. It's great. Your, your hometown station. Will you still need me? Will you still feed me when I'm 64? Welcome back to the Senior Hour. I'm Barbara Cochran with my co-host, Dr. Jean Dorio, on your hometown station, 98.1 FM, AM 1220 KHTS. And we're speaking with Alex Urbina, a life coach, and what an incredible conversation we've been having. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very interesting. I mean, the hour is almost gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it goes fast. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we talk about positive <laughs> attitude, and, you know, how do we instill in our older adults that positive attitude? It's just like this virus. We don't know the mechanisms and things like that that take place, but, uh, you know, and uh, like I told you be earlier, I – I learn by mechanisms, uh, but I just don't know what that mechanism is for, for us to get people's brains moving in a positive attitude ber- direction. So I'd like to have you, Barb, let me dissect your brain a little bit <laughs> and figure out, you know, how you get that attitude. And I think it comes from your, your dad and your parents. I think that's where it has come from. Well, I think also... I've had some bad things happen to me in my mm-hmm. lifetime. And I think th- that has helped push me into a more positive area. Mm-hmm. I really do. Because mm-hmm. when, you, when you survive a war, you survive a cancer, you survive losing parents, losing a child, things like that, I think in some people, will completely decimate them. Mm-hmm. But in other people, they make you stronger. Yeah. And I think that's what's happened to me. Yeah. I strongly believe that. So I believe it, it's also in the way you were raised yeah. and your parents. So I really do, do. So do we have to have these things happen to us to make us stronger? And I, I don't know the answer to that, but I wish I did. I wish I knew a better mechanism on how to get into somebody's brain and give them a positive attitude. Well, I can give you, I can give you the what I learned. Mm-hmm. What I learned is <clears throat> in order to have a positive attitude, you have to create a new conversation within yourself mm-hmm. because the old conversation might have a bunch of limiting beliefs. 
Like I'm not smart enough. I'm not good enough. I'm not strong enough. All those limiting beliefs get in the way. Mm -hmm. But whether you had a childhood that you've had some ups and downs, like you had that, that helped you create a new belief system, right? That you can take on anything. If you don't have any of that, you can just decide to create a new conversation. And the best way to create a new conversation for yourself is through what's called an affirmation. An affirmation is a positive statement that you make to yourself. And you can have multiple affirmations. And what you do is you repeat these affirmations to yourself daily. And what you end up doing is you end up programming your mind. Mm -hmm. You condition your mind to believe this way. So a af positive affirmation is something like, um, I'm strong, I'm healthy, and I can endure anything that the life throws at me. Uh, money comes abundant and flawlessly through me so that I can be in service to others. Um, I am healthy in mind, body, and spirit, right? Th those are just three general affirmations that somebody can create for themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's like you have to train yourself to believe like this, but you have yes. to start with opening up a notebook and writing down these positive affirmations yes. that you constantly repeat to yourself. Now, if you do this consistently for three months, what you're going to start noticing is your mindset, mind sh uh, set starts to shift. And you start to think more positively. It's it's they say it takes three months to create a habit, wow. whether it's a negative habit or a positive habit. But if you create these powerful affirmations and read them to yourself and constantly, the same way that when you said you studied for the bar or you studied or you studied for your exam in medical school, you said you had to memorize all these things, right? Yeah. What were they? Well, they were th mostly the drugs, but I didn't memorize anything oh. because there were mechanisms. Oh, okay, for got me. it, got it. So but everything was easy. But most for me. people they memorize things. Oh, most people, ninety-five percent. <coughs> right. It's all memory, right. and it's in one ear out the other. Right. But if you can, if you can memorize and practice and using w your words mm -hmm. to say these affirmations over and over again, they become your beliefs. Mm -hmm. You now have these. You've inserted these positive beliefs in your in your mindset. And it now it just becomes a part of you. Can I ask you a quick question, though, about PTSD? Yes. And how that it might relate to reorganizing one's brain uh, to have positive beliefs and subtracting out the PTSD problems? What's the question? Uh, whether the, there is a connection. Absolutely. However, the PTSD, the person who has it, has to be has to have the will and the desire to get better but they have to investigate it they have to be aware they have to know right and but but how, it's do, how do you get that first in their consciousness but it starts with somebody that has psd to want to get help this goes yes. back oh, to yeah, yeah. it that's goes back to i can't help people that don't want to help themselves that's, right. that's, right. that's, that's it bottom line but if you mm -hmm. have somebody that has ptsd and has the will to live and like we talked about earlier has the purpose like i want to be there for my my mm -hmm. daughter's wedding i want to live long enough to be able, they have all those mm -hmm. and they go get help there are people that are experts at PT ptsd that can help them mm -hmm. the problem is a lot of them don't go and get the help yeah, they don't, they don't reach help. out and say i <laughs> need help a lot a lot of what gets in the way is the the conditioning that they grew up either they're too macho or even s something that has them not want to reach out for help, they don't get it. Yeah. That's very interesting, and it's very true. Very true. And, you know, PTSD doesn't just come from war. <coughs> you know, it comes from how w sometimes how we've grown up. Any life event A that causes trauma. Event. You know, and people don't realize that they associate PTSD with Vietnam. Yeah. You know, or Afghanistan. Any traumatic experience. There is. Right. There are. There, there is PTSD there, but it's, you know, not. It's some of the things in life that we have faced that then affect us. That's right. In a negative way that, you know, we can change it. We can curtail it. We can bring in new beliefs uh, in how we start thinking about life. Alex, um, always a great yes. conversation. Thanks for having always. me. I appreciate uh, it. Yes. How do people get a hold of you? Life coach. You know, th there are people who are s sitting there right now and saying, I need this. Yeah, just Google me, Alex Rabina, U-R-B-I-N-A. Alex, great. Thanks for thanks being for on the show. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Enjoyed we, we, it. Thank you so much. We are sponsored by Comfort Keepers in Home Care and Advanced Audiology. Listen to us next week on the Senior Hour. Now go and enhance your quality of life.